Hello and welcome to a tutorial of my Supergirl heat vision effect. A little over two years ago I uploaded a similar video where I did like a, an effect video of Supergirl heat vision and ever since I uploaded that one I've repeatedly gotten comments from people saying that they want a tutorial. Unfortunately uh, that project has been lost to time. So I decided why not make a new version with the sole purpose of actually trying to do a tutorial and that is what we have here. Now before you just fast forward the video uh, there has to be some disclaimers this is my first tutorial ever. I've never done a tutorial before, so this might be a bit rough. I'm going to try and go through everything I've done here in After Effects, and if you feel like there's something I should have explained more, if, if you feel like there's something that's unclear, just write your questions or whatever in the comment section down below and of course I'll try to answer them as best as I can. Now just because of pure length I'm going to split this video up into two parts. My first part here is intended to be the main bulk. Like if you watch this this video you will have like the main ground idea for how to do a heat vision effect. Not necessarily a Supergirl heat vision effect. The only reason why I'm really saying it's inspired by Supergirl is of course because the heat vision is blue. You can do whatever color you want you know. The point of my tutorial is just for you guys to follow along and get some inspiration. It's not meant for you guys to just like completely copy paste because you know you won't do your own thing then. And then the second part of the tutorial will be me adding in the the other effects like the stock footage of, of smoke and sparks and grading and color correction just to add a bit more like extra spice to the effect. I would of course recommend to watch them both and if I plan this correctly this is why this video has been taking such a long time because I want to upload them like back to back part one and two so you guys can watch them at like basically the same time. But now though I feel like I talked for way too long and I'm sorry about that. Hopefully you've all listened because because I'm, my voice is just very very interesting. Let's get started with the tutorial and we're gonna start with by talking about tracking. Okay, so here we are inside my After Effects composite. You here you see the original footage, of course. And down here you can see that I already have some layers. Now you can you don't have to worry about the two top layers. They, they're not important for, for the shot, but the, the all the other ones are tracking data, so they're very important. Tracking is the most important part of your shot. As you can see, I have a lot of things for my cheek and my eye. And to do the tracking, I've used a mixture of After Effects own motion tracker, you know, that After Effects has, but I've also used Mocha, which should come in After Effects. I'm having trouble finding it, but it's in animation and then track in Mocha a After Effects, which is what AA stands for. And that is what I've used to do the cheek track, for instance, because there I want to track uh, more than just like one point. I want to track like scale and all that. Go watch another YouTube tutorial for tracking if you don't know what tracking is because tracking is very important if you have a moving camera or if you have a person that moves and the effect is supposed to be on the person, you know, you always have to track. That's why I've already done it here first. You know, it's the first thing I do because if you don't have tracking, you don't know that the shot is actually going to work. That's why it's so important. So now that I've given you all a little PSA and why tracking is important, let's just dive right into the actual comp and we'll start by doing the vein that are supposed to be on my my screen. Obviously now I'm only going to be working on my right eye, not the left eye, because this is basically just a copy paste job. If you know how to do it on my right eye, you're gonna know how to do it on my left eye. So we're gonna drag this in, I'm gonna rotate it around, and by the way you can rotate by clicking the, the spinning circle up top here in the toolbar or just W on the keyboard. And now we're going to shape this around and then I'm gonna duplicate it just to get a bit more, a bit more veins. So all you really have to focus about here is just making it look like the veins are where they're supposed to be like in a natural way. Uh, by the way, I found this image on Google, so all you have to search for is like veins, a PNG image, and that's how I got them. Now I'm going to pre-mold these two layers so that they are together, and I'm going to name them veins and then R to signify that they are on my right screen side. Then I'm going to use the pen tool, which is up here in the toolbar, or alternatively, you can press G on the keyboard. If you press V on the keyboard, you get the regular, you know, mouse, and then if you press G, you get the pen tool, and I'm going to be using them a lot, so remember <laughs> V and G. <laughs> so now I'm going to do a little mask around here just so I can get the veins uh, specifically inside because, well, we don't want it all over the screen. So and now that we have that, we, I'm going to go over here to and press F to get the mask feather and, well, we'll, we'll set it to 20 maybe. No, maybe 30. That'll be good. And as you can see here, now I've added my cheek track that I did in Mocha. And as you can see, it pretty much sticks right to my my face. If you're interested in Mocha tutorials, there are they are several on YouTube. So it shouldn't be that hard to find. I don't want the veins to be there for the entire time. So we're going to go down to the opacity and you press T 
to open up opacity on your keyboard and we're creating a keyframe here by dragging it down to zero and also pressing the stopwatch that's how you can create the keyframes um, and then we're gonna go from zero to 70 and this is the range where I want my my veins to pop up and this is also the range I'm gonna use for when creating the light around my eye because the light is supposed to create uh, the, you know the veins so to speak and so this is how it looks in in motion here I'm gonna disable the vein slayer just because I want to see the eye more and I'm going to create a solid by right-clicking and then going to solid and then I want like an orangey red solid because this is going to be to be screened onto my eye as you know as, as, as a light basically and we're gonna disable this also because we're gonna do a mask again pressing the pen tool we're gonna draw a very similar uh, to what we did with, with veins, you know, just drawing around it a bit bigger this time and also we want another mask inside because the eye, well we don't want the eye to have the same orangey brightness so we're going to do a mask around the eye to cut it out and then when we add it back, this is how it looks, very very beautiful. We're going to press F to feather it, but also we're going to change the inner mask from add to subtract to take away the part of the eye that we don't want to be <laughs> orange. And now we're going to feather the shit of it by maybe like 10 and then this could be maybe 50 again it's all up to you and how also how your shot looks because your shot might be completely different and then of course we're gonna screen it and screen just makes it look <laughs> better <laughs> I suppose now we're going to create an adjustment layer and we're gonna copy in the mask from the red solid into the adjustment layer because we want them to be the same basically then I'm going to go here into the search bar and search for curves and I'm basically just gonna add in of so much light. I wanna add in some contrast, some reds and greens to make it a bit more of a red orangey feel. It's all up to your personal preference, of course, and how your own shot looks. It might look completely different to mine lighting wise, so then that's not gonna work simply as that. And this is how everything looks together with, with the veins. I realized that my adjustment layer didn't have a, any tracking, so we're gonna go to cheek track again, just like we've done with the past three. And now we have to create a transition like we did with the veins layer. We want the light to have a beginning and not an end because the video ends before the effect ends. So we're gonna keep it going right until the end. So we're gonna use the stopwatch on the opacity. We're gonna have the, just the same position as the veins just to make it see, simple and easier. You know, again, I would recommend playing around with the transition where, you know, to see what you feel works better, to see what you feel like looks better. And now that we have the motion blur on for everything, why don't we take a look at how it all comes together with the tracking markers and all that. I think it looks pretty nice if I do say so myself. It does look weird without my eye being like white and bright, but <laughs> that, that, this is how it looks when it's in process. We're going to create a solid, this time it's going to be a white solid and we're gonna name it white eye R again to signify that this is the right side um, of course right screen side and we're gonna zoom in here onto the eye we're going to oh, we're gonna create a pen tool again to create a mask open up the pen tool to create a mask that's what I was about to say this doesn't have to be um, super precise at all just make it be around the eye and not outside of the eye I'm going to feather this with the F key you feather it then we're gonna duplicate it two times press F again this time instead of three it's going to be six and then the other one instead of six it's going to be 12 and this is how the effect looks like now um, it's it, it's a glowing eye <laughs> that's essentially everything the effect is and now I'm going to pre-compose these three into one white eye on the right and voila we have a right eye and we're gonna track it oh for some reason the tracking names have gone I think I pressed this yeah okay now the tracking names are gone back and I'm using my cheek track to track the eye and I'm doing the exact same thing here as I've done in the past when it comes to opacity that you can access by pressing T on the keyboard And this is how everything looks in motion now together with the white eye. Now that I have the eye and everything in place and everything is tracked, we're going to create the actual heat vision. So I'm going to create a solid, name it heat vision R because of the right eye of course. And then I'm going to disable it just so I can see my actual uh, sequence here. And then I'm going to create a mask. And this is exactly how you would do a lightsaber. So if you know how to do a lightsaber, you essentially know how to create a heat vision or like a laser beam. You're just gonna do like a mask like this. And here we are. 
we we're, we're done now. <laughs> we have the heat vision. <laughs> okay, not really. No, we have still some more things to do. But this is like the the main thing. This is essentially what the heat vision is. And now I'm going to work specifically with this one here because I'm going to duplicate this layer a lot. I already want it to be tracked and all that, which is why I'm pressing laser track this time. And now when moving around in the shot with with it being tracked, I realized that oh shit, it cuts out. So I'm just gonna drag it out a bit. You always should be careful about that when you're tracking. You don't want your effect to suddenly end. <laughs> so now I'm going to count one, two, three, four frames back. And I'm going to add a mask path here. Go back to my second second because I've decided that my second second will be when my heat vision is like out for the first time. Uh, purely for this tutorial because it's easy to see, you know, okay, second second, here we go. So now I'm back four frames back and I'm going to drag this using the mask path and now I'm going to add an opacity as well. Bring it down to zero and then the next frame is going to be on a hundred percent. So now when we view this, I've already made my own little animation here of me shooting the heat vision out, you know, just take the mask path, you press the stopwatch on the second second, go about four frames back or so, I would actually recommend maybe three because as you can see it looks a bit slow. So three or four frames back, then you press the stopwatch once again, and this time you press the stopwatch of my mask path again, and then you, you drag it right back to the eye and that's how you create this, this little animation right here. So now I'm going to add some feather to this layer, about three, and then I'm going to duplicate it three times, like one, two, and three. And we're going to change the feather again, by the way, press F to change the feather. <laughs> Uh, from 3 to 12, and then from 12 to 30, and then from 30 to 60. And this is how you create the glow. By the way, again, this is exactly how you do a lightsaber. So if you know how to do a lightsaber, you know how to do this. But so yeah, now I have a heat vision and it moves thanks to my mask path that I originally did. So always do like your animations with, with the first layer before duplicating it. And now I'm going back to my original comp because my feathers on my heat vision, I want it to be a blue color. So I'm just going to copy paste my my color here because this program has been known to crash VC Color Vibrance. It's a plugin from Video Copilot. It's a free plugin, so you can just download it. So hopefully um, it doesn't crash right now. So I'm just going to copy it in and it seems to work, so that is wonderful. But be aware to always save before adding in VC Color Vibras because for me it just blah. So I'm gonna change all of these three feathers to screen and then I'm going to pre-molt them and name them Heat Vision Feather R. And now I realized that I made a mistake because I shouldn't use uh, the trackers here before pre-molting them, so I'm gonna switch back them to none and then I'm going to pre-molt them again. And now everything should work Easy peasy, just gotta name them again. And voila, now I'm adding the track to my pre molt instead. And of course, I'm changing the here to screen. And now we have our our heat vision. This is like the, the main thing. Now you could essentially just do the do the supergirl shot because now you have a heat vision. Lightsabers out of your eyes, yes. I of course want it to be a bit more motion to my heat vision. And to do that, I'm going to duplicate my original heat vision layer. That's not a feather. And I'm going to take away the tracker because I'm going to pre-compose it. And I'm going to name it Turbulence. That's right, I'm going to add some turbulence to my heat vision. But before I do that, I want to add some color to my heat vision mask. And instead of just doing blue on the outside of it, I want to do blue throughout the entirety of the thing. Because I want the turbulence to be a bit more blue. So now that I've done that and that's done, I'm going to go back to my original shot. Just click away these for <laughs> simplicity's sake so you don't get way too like overwhelmed with things and then I'm gonna use the search engine to write turbulent displays and here we go and when I disable these you can see that I have some turbulence and I'm gonna switch this to 100 and I'm gonna change this to 5 and there you go now we have some sweet sweet turbulence the complexity to 3 and of course change them to screen so it becomes a bit more see-through and there you go now you have some what looks like movement in your heat vision that I like a bit more. I know Supergirl's heat vision doesn't really have that. So if you want to do like specifically like Supergirl's heat vision, you should probably ignore this step, but this is how, how I made my my effect. So now I'm gonna go back to an earlier frame before I shoot the heat vision out. And then I'm gonna press the stopwatches here for evolution and offset. And then I'm gonna go way, way beyond <laughs> my effect and has ended, which would be around like my my fifth frame or so, that's where I'm ending the effect. Now I realize that I've made a mistake here with the tracking. 
That's right, I forgot to even put on the tracker. <laughs> I'm very smart. Now it should be tracked though. So here we are at the end, go back to the turbulent layer, and now we're going to change something so that we can get a, an animation. So go into effects, turbulent displays, add some keyframes here. And now we're going to, to start moving things, you know, to create this animation. So from zero to eight, maybe on evolution, that might work. Again, if you want to add turbulent displacement, you can do whatever numbers you want. You know, this is specifically what I felt was, was nice. And I'm moving the offset a lot because I want it to look like it just like flying forward very fast. And then because I feel like the turbulence is too sharp, I'm going to add in some motion blur, some fake motion blur. Um, I just thought that it looked good. So I'm going to change 180 to 120, no, to 100. And yeah, I feel like that looks a bit better. It still looks like it has movements, but it doesn't look like that sharp. So here we go, now we have some movements of me shooting heat vision out of my face, but I feel like one thing is still missing before ending this part one, and that is of course, I have to add a little lens flare on my eye. I'm gonna zoom into my shot, add a new solid, doesn't matter what color, hmm. and then I'm gonna go in, and here we are. I'm gonna rename the solid to lens flare. Nope, I'm gonna change it to eye flare. <laughs> just to specify more specifically what type of lens flare it's going to be. And then I'm gonna write optical flares. And here we go. And now I'm gonna go in, by the way, optical flares is also another plugin, of course. And here we go, just grabbing one very quickly. And then we're gonna change this from normal to screen. And then we're gonna try and place the lens flare as best as we can. Change the brightness and scale from 100 to maybe 60 or so, depending on how far away your character is from the shot. I just don't want to be like completely overwhelmed by the lens flare. I just want some more like added lights to it. Of course, I'm gonna change the color to a bit more of a blue color because it is Supergirl's heat vision after all. And there we go, now we have a, a lens flare. Automatically, I feel like this shot looks way better because of it. <laughs> now, I'm, now, of course, I'm gonna track it. I'm gonna use the, the eye track because that is specifically on my eye. So now I'm gonna press the, these two stopwatches for brightness and scale. I'm gonna go back around like, again, just like with heat vision, around like four to five frames. And then I'm gonna change both of these down to zero because I don't want the lens flare to be there before the heat vision. And now I'm gonna play back and see how it looks. I'm realizing that I don't really like it because the heat vision is coming out way too late. So I'm going to go down to my effects here and two optical flares and then I'm just going to take all of these four uh, keyframes and I'm just gonna drag them way down here so that the lens flares are already maximized when I'm beginning to shoot my heat vision. I feel like that would look just a bit better. And now that I'm looking at it after I changed the keyframes a bit, I do like it a lot more. Because before the heat vision was fully out when my lens flare came on, I didn't really like that. So I like this a lot more. But hey you guys, this is the end of part one. I'm now shooting heat vision out of my eyes. I hope this part wasn't like way too, too long for you guys. Hopefully you could understand some things. Again, I feel like it might be hard to understand if you're completely new in After Effects, and if you've never used it before, you, this is probably not, this is probably not been the best video for you to watch, but I hope you have been able to follow along somewhat. I've basically just been going through what I've done rather than like acting as a teacher and stuff, because I don't really know how to do that, so. Um, yeah, I hopefully you enjoyed part one and part two should already be out when you're watching this And if it's not it should be out within a few hours or the next day because of course I'm gonna have to edit this video as well But I hope you all enjoy this video and at least try to follow along and tune into part two Where I'm gonna be adding in some extra effects like the the smoke and all the sparks and the stock footage effects. So yeah, see you then